we now shift gears back to um, a single cancer entity, in this case, carcinoma of unknown primary, also called Cup syndrome. And as um, at least some of you might be not so familiar with that type of cancers compared to, for example, lung cancer, what we heard before, I would first like to briefly introduce you into the topic. And uh, this will be followed by the few data that are available on the molecular characterization of this order, of this disorder. And finally, um, as Cup syndrome, cancer of unknown primary, is um, probably an example as good as it can get for a tumor agnostic uh, treatment regimen, um, I will explain a clinical trial in that disorder that is sequencing based and that will start rather soon. Okay, so what is cancer of unknown primary? You find metastases, but you are unable to identify the primary tumor despite extensive investigation. And uh, this, you, you need to know a few facts at least, and uh, one is this is not so rare as one might assume. It's uh, about three to five percent of all malignancies. And the second important uh, thing that one needs to needs to accept is that at least during lifetime of the patient, the primary will be identified only in a small minority of individuals. And thirdly, the prognosis of those patients is with a median overall survival of nine months rather poor. Okay, so old autopsy studies um, suggest at least that um, about half of the patients in whom a primary can be identified at autopsy suffer from either lung cancer or pancreatic cancer. These data have been challenged by more recent uh, genome, a, a gene expression profiling data, but that would make the story too complicated now to go into that. At least what can be taken home from that is lung cancer and pancreatic cancer play quite, quite a role in, um, in this disease type. Histologically important is that the majority of, um, of Cup syndromes are adenocarcinomas or poorly differentiated carcinomas as opposed to squamous cell carcinoma, which is more rare. Another important point to note is that a subset of the patients with Cup syndrome be belong to more favorable prognostic subsets. This is about 15 to 20 percent of all cases, and as one example, um, women that have isolated axillary lymph node metastases without an identifiable breast cancer uh, will be treated anyway as a breast cancer and then have a better prognosis as compared to the vast majority of co-patients. And this is an example of very similar clinical pathological situations um, in which likely primaries can be assumed and <coughs> patients treated accordingly, making a better prognosis for those patients. Nevertheless, the vast majority of patients, 80 to 85 percent of all uh, individuals with the Cup syndrome, belong to the large uh, poor prognostic subset that I'm dealing with in the remainder of the talk. So what can be done for those patients nowadays? Standard is a platinum-based doublet chemotherapy, often uh, carboplatin taxol, but also cisplatin taxol, cisplatin uh, uh, gemcitabine. So mostly doublet chemotherapies, platinum-based. And when these treatments are applied to those patients. This is what you get the median overall survival of nine months, as I uh, told you already. And uh, even more disappointingly, this has not changed for the last five decades. So these uh, curves are almost identical from the 60s of the last century to nowadays. About 10, 15 years ago, uh, people thought that it might be a good idea to start gene expression profiling based attempts to identify the primary. The, the assumption is that different tissue types have distinct mRNA profiles, and when you then take a tissue sample, 
do RNA profiling and compare that with RNA profiles of cancers with a known primary, you might be able to identify the primary in patients with Coop syndromes. That has been done extensively. Several tests have been on the market, uh, and uh, others have been uh, put forward by academic teams, and the accuracy of prediction of those tests when tested in primary cancers is somewhere between 60 and 90 to 95 percent max, and there are a few studies that have um, performed studies on the basis of these tests. This is one of them. Uh, so it, it's all uh, retrospective analysis. This is an, an analysis where people, uh, pa could patients that have been treated with carboplatin uh, taxol-based regimen have been analyzed retrospectively with a gene expression profiling test and then subdivided into two, sorry, into two groups, into a group that would be by primary identification be expected to be responsive to a platinum-based uh, chemotherapy regimen and into another group that might be expected to be non-responsive. And when you do something like that, then you indeed see that the response rate, but also the progression and overall survival in those individuals that ha have been assumed to, to be responsive to platinum-based chemotherapy indeed do better. Although, once more, this is a retrospective analysis and a, a rather small trial. A bit bigger, but also retrospective trial is the one that I'm showing you here. Same, same procedure, primary identification based on gene expression profiling. In total, 250 patients. Uh, those patients have then been treated with regimens that uh, fit to the presumed primary that has been presumably identified, and all that has been retrospectively compared with patients uh, that have, re with CUP patients, obviously, that have received a standard nonspecific platinum-based uh, CUP chemotherapy regimen. And as you can see here, at least for a retrospective analysis, this difference is quite disappointing. Finally, another Strategy to identify uh, a primary is not based on gene expression profiling, but in that case on methylation profiling. And as one might expect, methylation states are more stable as compared to mRNA expression uh, levels. The, sorry, the sensitivity and the specificity of a procedure like that based on methylation profiling is really, uh, really very good. Uh, and uh, within the same trial, another retrospective analysis suggested that patients that receive, based on that essay, a specific therapy might do better as compared to empiric therapy. But when you think about this, those patients did receive a specific therapy because something else in their clinical or pathological picture suggested a primary. Therefore, they received a specific therapy. And uh, therefore, the methylation profiling wasn't really necessary to do so. So maybe uh, simple differentiation and clinical behavior of the tumor uh, led to that difference. In any case, a randomized trial that tests this assumption that gene expression profiling based specific treatment is or might be superior to unspecific uh, CUP treatment. This assumption is tested in an ongoing clinical trial by a French group. It's called the GEFCAPI um, 04 trial and will hopefully help us to understand whether this, this leads somewhere or not. Similar to other tumor types, lung cancer and, and many others, uh, genome profiling, so mutation analysis, has obviously also been performed by, by several groups in, uh, in CUP tumors, and what comes out is not unexpectedly, unexpectedly a, a very similar t a picture as compared to other tumor entities. You see some mutations that are very frequent, and then you see this long tail distribution. Several groups have done that with very similar results. TP53 
KRAS, MAT4, these are all frequent mutations. But when you look a bit more in detail, then there are at least some of the mutations that might be targetable. And the most recent analysis, mutational analysis of, of CUP syndromes suggests that about one third of the patients harbor mutations that uh, can uh, that are druggable at an evidence level two or three. This analysis also for the first time looked at tumor mutational burden in, in those patients. And as you can see here, there are quite a few patients that uh, harbor a significant amount of mutations that might be amenable to uh, immune checkpoint inhibitor treatment. This is now an analysis, um, as you can see from the big number for, for uh, a CUP trial, very big, that is based on foundation medicine results. And this analysis also looked at the mutational burden in those CUP patients. And what you can see is that a high tumor mutational burden is found in approximately 10% of the patients um, with adenocup or undifferentiated cup, and that the mutational burden is significantly higher, at least in this analysis, twice as high, 23%, in patients suffering from squamous cell cup, which is obviously a rare entity. One very recent study also did mutational analysis in CUP patients from circulating tumor DNA, showing at least that this is an approach that is feasible, although the detection rate is significantly lower as compared to when you sequence primary tumor mat material, which is also not unexpected and not heard of. Two cases that show that also in the CUP field, patients might benefit from targeted therapy. This is actually a patient that has been published by, by Jeff Ross. It's a, a woman that um, was diagnosed with an abdominal mass and a brain lesion. It, uh, histologically, it was a poorly differentiated carcinoma, and the patient progressed after several cycles of CUP standard treatment, carboplatin, docetaxel in this case, and then by genomic profiling, a metamplification was found, and this res uh, resulted in a durable response. And I do believe, when talking to Jeff uh, lately, that uh, she continued, continues to be in durable response or durable remission. Another patient published from a group in Heidelberg um, dealt with a 44-year-old female patient. The initial diagnosis was soft tissue sarcoma, poorly differentiated soft tissue sarcoma, sarcoma, and the patient progressed after surgery, irradiation, and chemotherapy. And um, when the reference pathology was performed, then the diagnosis was revised to poorly differentiated adenocup. And uh, a genetic profile led to the finding that there was a PDL1 amplification. Subsequently, the patient received treatment with pembrolizumab, and this results, uh, resulted also in a durable and still ongoing remission, thereby highlighting that patients with CUP syndrome might benefit from uh, targeted treatment as well. I might skip that. And for that reason, um, we have now decided to start a trial that um, will analyze this aspect. Does targeted treatment in a population of CUP pati patients is more beneficial as compared to standard unspecific chemotherapy? For that, um, in again, uh, a large number of CUP cases, the number of individuals harboring mutations in the treatment strata that will be employed in that trial has been an analyzed. And as you can see here, about 36% of the patients harbored from, from that uh, collective, harbored a mutation relevant to one of the eight study treatment options offered in that clinical trial. And also importantly, about 6% of those had even more than one treatment option, which might turn out to be a problem uh, when 
decisions are made on the actual treatment. Here is the study outline. It looks a bit complicated, but it isn't. Uh, I will quickly guide you through it. In total, almost 800 patients will be included in the trial. Each of the patients will, at diagnosis, receive a foundation medicine-based panel sequencing. After that, each of the patients will receive three cycles of induction chemotherapy, platinum-based, and uh, subsequently the patients that do not or have not, at least not progressed after those three cycles will then be randomized in a three to one manner into control arm, which is another three cycles of a platinum-based chemotherapy <coughs> versus an experimental arm that consists out of nine treatment strata, seven of those are targeted treatments mutation-based, and two of those are immune <coughs> checkpoint inhibition-based. For those patients that do or have progressed after these initial three cycles, uh, these treatment options are also available, but outside of the randomization. The patients that do go into the trial are newly diagnosed patients with adeno or poorly differentiated Cup syndrome with a reasonable performance status. And due to the large number of patients that are included, almost 800, this will be an international trial that takes place in 25 countries. So taken together, I've shown you that disseminated or undifferentiated Cup comprises the vast majority of CUP cases and is associated with poor prognosis. There is a smaller subgroup of patients that belong to, a more fav to, to one of several more favorable subgroups. The treatment standard up to now is platinum-based doublet chemotherapy. Whether primary identification by gene expression profiling or methylation <laughs> profiling will be helpful is out in the blue up to now, but a randomized trial examining this is currently running. Genome sequencing approaches can I identify similar to other tumor types, potentially truggable mutations also in patients with Cup syndrome, and for that reason, a large clinical trial analyzing the impact of targeted treatments in patients with Cup syndrome will start soon. Thanks for your attention.